Major funding for NJTV News is provided in part by the members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. And PSE&G, we make things work for communities. Tonight on NJTV News, a cabinet nominee with national credentials. The governor-elect proposes an environmentalist to head the Department of Environmental Protection. We'll take you inside Newark's newest shelter for the homeless, a place they can go during the winter. Plus, only one member of the state's congressional delegation voted for the tax overhaul. Representative Tom MacArthur explains why. And something new at the zoo, a new baby who's taller than the average American male, but you should see his father. Those stories and more next on NJTV News. from the Agnes Barris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway Center in Newark. This is NJTV News with Mary Alice Williams. Hello, thank you for joining us. Another key cabinet nomination for the governor-elect's administration, and this one has the portfolio to clear the air and water. Senior correspondent David Cruz reports. Unlike several of his recent cabinet picks, where you had to squint to match the resume to the job, today's selection, like yesterday's pick for DOT, comes with a CV packed with environmental bona fides. She has served, and this is a long list, as Assistant New York Attorney General and as the Deputy Chief of the Environmental Enforcement Section of the Federal Department of Justice. She has been Deputy Assistant Administrator of the Office of Enforcement and Compliance Assurance at the Federal Environmental Protection Agency and served as one You get the idea. She's been around. The naming of Catherine McCabe as the governor-elect's pick to head up the state's Department of Environmental Protection drew praise from the state's enviro community, who spent almost eight years in the political wilderness. We have no more time to waste. Now is the time to take action, both to help lead the way in helping to slow climate change and adapting to make our communities more resilient. I remain and we remain committed to a new energy master plan, one that we have not had for a long time in the state, that would see our state achieve 100 percent clean energy by the year 2050 with, importantly, achievable shorter-term benchmarks. Getting there by encouraging wind, solar, and other alternative energies, and focusing, yes, on the shore, where resilience is critical, but also on urban New Jersey, where choking smog from trucking and other port activities has affected asthma and cancer rates. She's been a strong enforcer, going after polluters for wrongdoing at a time when we've had an agency, not just in the Christie administration, but previous administrations who've kept um, scaling down the agency and actually not going after polluters. We certainly have to make up for lost ground over the previous administration, and that's going to take uh, some really dedicated individuals. Uh, she's going to need to build out a strong team. Um, but I think New Jersey is well positioned to be a leader once again on environmental protection. We have been looking out, my husband and my children and I, for years at that horizon that we're looking at here and saying, when are the windmills coming? Clearly, this has got to be New Jersey's future, and this is an opportunity we've been waiting for for too long. Murphy said the choice of this new environmental sheriff should be a signal to polluters who've ravaged the Garden State for generations with impunity, but also to those companies looking to take advantage of the green economy, which Murphy says has been slowed to a crawl in the state. In Long Branch, I'm David Cruz and JTV News. The Congressional Tax Code overhaul temporarily cuts tax rates for individuals, nearly doubles the standard deduction, and doubles the child tax credit, but it will sharply curtail tax breaks for many New Jersey residents. And the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy says more than one quarter of the state's taxpayers, 26 percent, would effectively get a tax increase. Every member of the state's congressional delegation voted against the measure, but one. Representative Tom MacArthur joins Michael Hill. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Uh, please tell us, how does this tax bill that was passed uh, this week, how does this benefit the people in your district and the people of America? Well, it's a great question, Michael, and uh, hello to, uh, to everyone there. Uh, this benefits the nation because it, it's the first real tax reform in 31 years. It gives the American people a real break in their taxes. 
It helps American companies be competitive, and uh, and I think it's going to help us grow our economy in a way that uh, we just haven't had in the last decade. And we need we need growth, we need jobs, and this will help. And the story is much the same in my district. We uh, we benefit in South Jersey in a number of ways. First, the vast majority of my constituents will get a tax break. Uh, I've run models. I've looked at every tax break, and this is really good for the people of South Jersey. Uh, there were things specifically that I fought for uh, to, to, to get me to a yes. One was getting back uh, deductibility of property taxes, which was not in the, uh, the initial bill. We got that uh, restored at ten thousand uh, dollars. The average uh, property tax bill in my district is about uh, sixty-three hundred dollars. Uh, we got medical deductibility back, which is a big deal to me. We have a lot of seniors. I've got a, about one hundred and forty thousand seniors in my district, and many of whom have a higher than average medical expense. And we got that back in the bill. And then there were a whole bunch of things uh, for people in education, whether it's teachers that spend uh, some money in their classrooms. Uh, we, we allowed the deductibility of that or, or student debt or uh, people on scholarships were going to get taxed for that, and we were able to get that out. So I, I'm really pleased with the final uh, bill. It's going to help our economy grow. It's going to create jobs. It'll help families have more uh, of their own money. It'll help businesses grow. And, and I think this is going to be really good for us. Congressman, you mentioned the uh, $10,000 cap for SALT deductibility. There are some people who are saying that's going to hurt housing valuations and prices and properties here in New Jersey, in California, New York, and other high price, high tax uh, states. Uh, how do you respond to that criticism? The $10,000 cap is, is, is not what a lot of homeowners in places like Bergen County, Hunterdon County, Monmouth County, uh, it doesn't seem to be in their favor. Well, I don't know that I agree with that. I've seen uh, estimates going in both directions, but I look at it this way. If property taxes are driving up home values in our, in our state, the answer isn't to raise taxes more. That's just going to drive prices up higher and make our state more unaffordable. If we bring taxes down, if the state brings taxes down and we make our state more affordable to young people who want to buy a home and are fleeing the state today, or old people who can't afford to stay anymore because property taxes are so high, we need to do something about that. And businesses who don't want to settle in New Jersey because we have a, we have a terrible regulatory environment and we're too expensive, uh, I, I think it can only help if we make our state more affordable. We're doing our part in Washington. We're bringing down taxes. I'm proud of the bill. It's time now for the state to also bring down taxes and be competitive. There's no reason for New Jersey to be the highest uh, taxed state in the nation. There's no reason for that. Why, why should Jersey residents pay the highest property taxes in the country? It makes no sense. How does it help in terms of deductions for folks here in New Jersey overall? Well, you, you got to look at all of it. You have to look at the deductions that we were able to restore, and, and that's most of the big ones. Property taxes, uh, health care costs, education costs, uh, those are all back in the bill. Then you have to look at the rates that are coming down uh, meaningfully. Every bracket, every one of the seven tax brackets is coming down. You have to look at the doubling of the standard deduction. Sixty percent of the people in New Jersey take the standard deduction. Right out of the gate, uh, Michael, they're, uh, they're getting double that deduction. That's, that's uh, meaningful tax relief for all of them. But, Congressman does, it do, the, Congressman, does it do enough, though, to benefit the people of New Jersey? Does it do enough in, in terms of benefiting the folks here? It, it, Michael, it does. And here's the, here's the funny thing. I've heard a lot of people crying the end of the world, crying the apocalypse. Uh, math doesn't lie. And facts matter. Uh, the people of New Jersey are going to see uh, the vast majority of them a tax decrease, lower taxes. They're going to see that in their paycheck come February. They're going to see that when they file their 2018 taxes, that they are paying less than they used to, unless the state decides to tax them more. And then, of course, they'll see more tax on the state side. But this is, this is uh, going to be good for the people of Jersey. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. It would be better for our people if we had lower property taxes and lower income tax. No question about it. The states that have lower taxes uh, make out even better on this bill. And if New Jersey can get to that place, 
then our people will get the full benefit of this federal tax cut. But it's still going to be good for the people in, uh, in New Jersey. Uh, finally, uh, Congressman, you were the lone congressman in New Jersey who voted uh, for this uh, this tax bill. Um, e e even before this vote, there were plenty of people who were saying that uh, your district, uh, your position in Congress is one of the vulnerable ones in New Jersey. Does this make you more vulnerable come next year? Uh, Michael, I have no idea. I just know this. Uh, I don't I don't work out my time as a congressman worrying about polls and politics. I listen to people. I do my work. I make sure that what I vote on is what I really believe. And I believe this is going to help our state and our country uh, be more competitive. And I, that's all I can do. Uh, I believe that in time, actually, it's not going to take that much time. The good people of South Jersey are going to see that after all the, the partisan uh, fear mongering and misinformation that this bill is actually good for them. And so uh, that's all I can rest on. And I believe in what I voted on. Can't answer for why other people saw it differently, but I did the work. I did the modeling. I didn't leave and just declare myself a no vote when, uh, when the bill came out. I didn't like it. I did vote no on the first version, but I went to work. I got a $10,000 restoration of property taxes. I worked with other people to get medical back to get education costs back, and it's a good bill. And, uh, and you know, I'm proud that I was able to make improvements to it, and, uh, and, and because of those improvements, I'm, uh, I'm happy to support it. Congressman, no Democrats in the House supported this bill. Is this any way to make laws for the entire nation? No, it's really not. And I, I really fault both parties for this. If I have one hope, uh, Michael, going into the new year, it's that uh, both parties learn to work together in a new way to do things that can really stand the test of time, things that don't have to get undone by the next administration. And I fought both parties for this. I, I went through this on health care when our party sort of left the Democrats out I voted no on the first version of that, too, because there were no Democrats involved. So Republicans bear some responsibility. So do Democrats in the House. Democrats have been just in a resist mode all year. They're voting no, even on good things. Today, for example, we vote to fund the government. And as, the, as we did two weeks ago, most Democrats are going to vote no. And that includes funding for CHIP, funding for military, funding for critical priorities. Why, why are Democrats voting no? Because they, they want some things on DACA uh, that we haven't gotten to yet. You can't hold up the entire government when you don't get every last priority of yours. So I, I would call on both parties to come together, stop resisting, stop excluding, let's work together and solve problems. I will work with anybody to solve these problems, including what to do about DACA, about the, the young people that were brought here illegally, including what to do about cost sharing reductions in health care. I will work with anybody, Republican, Democrat, independent. To, uh, to solve these problems. Congressman, how much pressure did you feel and your colleagues feel to get something like the tax bill done, given this would have been the first major achievement, legislative achievement, for this new president? I don't really look at it through that lens at all, Michael. I felt uh, pressed to get the bill right and to make sure that we delivered on what we promised, but to do it in a way that actually helped people. And so I, I'm not keeping score the way some do. I'm concerned of w whether it's uh, this president or our last president, whether it's a president from either party or a Congress of either party. I want to see that over time we're getting things done that help the American people, whether it's in the first 90 days or first year, uh, to me, gets overblown quite a bit. Congressman Tom McArthur joining us from his office there in Washington, D.C. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you, Michael. Now, if you're still scratching your head trying to decipher the new tax structure's effect on you, tune in to our Facebook page tomorrow at noon. Business correspondent Rhonda Schaffler will be hosting what we're calling a Lunch and Learn with the executive director of the New Jersey Society of CPAs, Ralph Thomas. You can submit your specific questions like, should you prepay next year's property taxes? Is your shore house deductible? What about your mortgage interest? You'll get some answers. Join us on our Facebook Live. That's Facebook.com slash NJTV online.
Crisis averted, that tops tonight's business news. Standing by at the Strategic Development Group studio at the NJACU School of Business is Rhonda Schaffler. Rhonda? Mary Alice, the House has passed a short-term funding bill that will avert a federal government shutdown that was looming at the end of this week. The measure keeps federal agencies open until January 19th and is designed to give congressional leaders and the president another month to come up with a long-term spending plan for fiscal 2018. The bill just approved by the House now must be voted on in the Senate. A very big milestone for the New Jersey economy. The state's private sector is now employing more people than ever before, according to new numbers from the federal government. Private companies in the Garden State employ more than 4.1 million workers, the highest amount in the state's history. There are 334,000 more jobs now than what New Jersey had during the low point of the last recession nearly eight years ago. Governor Christie weighing in on that newly passed federal tax reform bill, and he has an idea on how to ease the pain for some state residents who pay high property taxes. The federal tax bill limits the deductibility of property taxes to $10,000 a year. New Jersey residents face that same $10,000 cap on property tax deductions when they file their state taxes. But the governor says the legislature should get rid of that limitation. In my view, we should make property taxes on, state, on our state income tax returns completely deductible in response to what the federal government has done. Because if we don't, it will have an effect on property values in the state. We can fix that, and it's a relatively affordable fix. I asked the Treasurer to score this for me, um, and he said it's about $150 to $170 million uh, cost to make property taxes fully deductible for everybody in New Jersey. Christie suggested there's time for lawmakers to get the bill to his desk before he leaves office. A follow-up to a story we reported on yesterday about the Christie administration reducing the assumed rate of return for the Public Workers Pension Fund. The rate was reduced to 7% from 7.65%, which could result in state and local governments having to pay more. Governor-elect Murphy says his transition team has asked to see the analysis used to justify that move and has yet to receive information. Murphy is accusing Christie of playing politics with the pension fund by rushing a decision at the 11th hour. On Wall Street, stocks closed higher. The Dow was up 55 points. And that's a look at our top business stories. holiday getaway. Sobering numbers from state police. 617 people have been killed on New Jersey roadways this year, 181 of them pedestrians. That number's the highest since 1993. Data from the New Jersey State Police Fatal Accident Investigations Unit shows more than half the victims were over age 50. Last January's annual single night snapshot of the state's homeless, called NJ Counts, revealed 2,048 people in Essex County alone had no shelter on the night of January 24th, 2017. In the new year, there's a new shelter in Newark providing warmth and safety, housing, and help for those still chasing the dream, Leah Mishkin reports. We send them upstairs, and um, when they get upstairs, their things go into a hot box, so, you know, we won't have to take no bed bugs or anything into the rooms. They take a shower. We give them fresh linen and toiletries. You're looking at Newark's first dedicated winter shelter for the homeless. It'll be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week through March. One of the challenges that uh, continues to persist is that there are unsheltered <coughs> homeless throughout our city and those are the individuals that you and I see on a daily basis from Penn Station to Military and Francisco Park. This shelter targets that population by not only giving people breakfast, dinner and a place to stay, but also access to case managers who can refer them to programs that offer help for things like domestic violence, mental health, housing options, drug and alcohol treatment facilities and other needs. I wish everybody who walked in here would not be homeless ever again as soon as they came through this building. But that's certainly not the case, right? So obviously we have to provide shelter, but also give them services. 
The capacity listed right now allows 100 people a night, but they say they won't turn anybody away, and the mayor says buses will be available to get people to the shelter. We're only a week into this, by the way, okay? And with just a week, with very little advertisements, we're averaging approximately 80, 80 persons a day. Numbers from Housing and Urban Development show there are over 553,000 homeless people in the United States. Over 8,000 of those people are homeless in New Jersey. And just in Essex County is where roughly 2,000 of them live. How many years were you homeless for? Oh, I was here about four. Four years. Four years. Always in Newark. In Newark, yeah. Bobby Wilson says he used to call Penn Station home. But now, you know, the situation is that you can't live in Penn Station because they're going to run you out, so you to the street. you got people living on the street out here now, sleeping on the street as we speak. In the cold weather. In the cold weather, bundled up and everything. For the past six months, he's been living in an apartment, but he says he's one of the lucky ones. Further down the hall at the medical clinic of St. John's is where we met Tony, who says he's still struggling. He's been on the low income housing wait list for two years and temporarily lives with family, but he says that's why many people end up on the streets. It's years, like it's not, you know, weeks or months, it's years. So what are you supposed to do in the meantime? The wait time for people like Tony might even get worse because the Housing Authority, which manages Newark's public housing, receives federal funding from HUD, which is at risk of losing $6 billion if the budget as it stands gets approved. Unfortunately, they've been cutting back on that, which forces the city to kind of, you know, play the heavy and, and, and try to fill in those gaps. Uh, but we do need more uh, kind of section eight and federal funded housing in these communities. They're trying to fill that gap with shelters like this new one. Bobby Wilson is concerned that more and more people will end up on the streets, though, as Newark continues to develop. A lot of us live on a fixed income, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, most of us are on disability and social security. So, you know, your money don't roll like that. You can't get no place for no $800 no more. If you ain't doing 1200 or better, now you're in trouble, you know? You're on the street. So you got to go to the street. And we also have to use the wealth that's being created in the city to reach out to those individuals as well, to give them the opportunity to first have a clean place to sleep, some food, uh, uh, you know, a peace of mind, relaxation, and then begin to give them uh, the kind of services that they need. That starts with this place. In Newark, Leia Mishkin, NJTV News. Families hit hard by the heroin epidemic. That tops tonight's Garden State Express. Our first stop, Northfield, and a holiday respite for children who've lost a parent to addiction. The party at American Legion Post 295 was thrown by Bill Schmincke and his wife, who started the organization Stop the Heroin after losing their son Stephen to an overdose. Its mission? To provide scholarships to people who've completed inpatient treatment so they can stay in sober living homes. Homes. They've sponsored 154 people so far, and with Santa's help, they gave 11 families a reason to smile. Next to Trenton, where Thomas Edison State University has announced a new president for the new year, Dr. Meredith Hancock will become the institution's fourth president. She's held that position at SUNY's Empire State College, which has a similar mission, offering degree pathways for busy working adults who want to complete their degrees. Dr. Hancock succeeds one of the longest sitting college or university presidents in the country, Dr. George A. Pruitt, who announced his retirement after 35 years in office. Dr. Hancock takes over in March. Finally, Cape May Courthouse, where what's new at the Cape May County Park and Zoo is a brand new baby giraffe. A six foot tall reticulated giraffe weighing in at 150 pounds at birth, who, though he may look kind of wobbly, officials have pronounced sturdy and steady. He's the fifth giraffe to join the herd here. Alas, he's unnamed. The zoo's vet says once the weather warms up in the spring, they'll let visitors size him up and they'll get naming rights. And that's the Garden State Express for Thursday, December 21st. Something up in your neighborhood? Tip us off.
And now some noteworthy facts from tonight's program that help you know Jersey. Private companies in New Jersey employ 4.1 million workers, the highest number in state history. There were 8,532 homeless people in New Jersey at the beginning of this year, according to Monarch Housing. 181 pedestrians have been killed on New Jersey roadways so far this year, the highest number since 1993. And the Cape May County Park and Zoo now has five reticulated giraffes. If there's someone who you'd like to get to know Jersey, share. Use hashtag no Jersey. Tomorrow on NJTV News, hidden holiday health hazards. And don't forget to tune in to our Facebook page tomorrow at noon when we dive into your questions about the tax overhaul. Join us on our Facebook Live. That's facebook.com slash NJTV online. To share any story you've seen tonight, go to njtvnews.org. I'm Mary Alice Williams. For all the men and women of NJTV News, thank you for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of New Jersey residents and businesses for more than 100 years. And Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. Funding for Chasing the Dream is provided by the JPB Foundation and the Ford Foundation.